welcome to my channel. Welcome to today's video. Today's video is going to be a foundation battle. So I have had this Shiseido Synchro Skin Self-Refreshing Foundation boxed up, waiting for me to do a wear test on. And then of course, Shiseido launched a new foundation, which is the Revitalescence Skin Glow Foundation. And I figured instead of doing a wear test individually on both these foundations, I would just battle them against each other since I haven't tried either, see which one is better so that way you can decide which one is better for you to pick up. So that's what I'm gonna be doing in today's video. I did do a wear test already. I'll kind of be recapping my wear test for both of these foundations, inserting in some swatches, comparing these to other shades in my collection. I picked up the shade 240 Quartz in both of these. And then I'll be going over my final thoughts and telling you which one I think is better. So if that all sounds good to you, make sure you give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't yet. I would love it if you stuck around. But with all that out of the way, let's get started going over the details of this foundation. All right, so of course I am wearing one of these foundations today. Let me know in the comments which one you think it is. But I first want to talk about the details and then go over the wear test for both of these foundations. And I think I want to start with the Shiseido Synchro Skin Self Refreshing because this is the one that's been around for the longest. It won the 2019 Allure Awards, Beauty Awards. So a lot of people really like this foundation. And I'm thinking that if you already have this and love this, you're maybe just like questioning if you need both. So this foundation comes in 27 shades and it retails for $47. This foundation is supposed to be a weightless, lightweight, 24 hour wear. It's supposed to give you medium coverage with a natural finish. And I do like that it has this kind of lock mechanism here when you pump it out. And it does not pump that much out of this. Of course, I locked it. I never remember which side is the lock, but you don't have that much of a pump. That was just something that I noticed that the pump amount was very little, which I don't mind. Usually I only go in with one pump of foundation. This time I went in with two. But now that brings me to the wear test for this foundation. Now, the very first time that I wore this is the day that I did my wear test. So I never use any primers just to get a feel, a baseline of the foundation, just my skincare. And just for reference, I do have normal leaning dry skin mainly leaning normal right about now. And I do prefer a light to medium coverage with a natural finish. So that's why this was just sounding right up my alley when everyone was talking about it and I picked it up. But upon application, I did use a sponge that is my preferred method to apply a foundation. And immediately when I applied it, I was thinking to myself, there's no way this other foundation is going to beat this. I love the finish of it. It is exactly what it claims to be. It's weightless, it's medium coverage, and it looks natural. It does lean a bit more on the matte side, just in my opinion. Now, I didn't powder this foundation. I only powdered my concealer and like my T-zone area, and then I did not set it with setting spray because I just felt like it didn't need it. It really was a natural leaning matte finish. So that brings me to the four hour check-in, which I do outside in natural daylight. And this is where I was starting to just doubt myself because it did look a little bit heavy. I felt like it was kind of sinking into my pores just a little bit, emphasizing my pores. That is my most problematic area if I had to just nitpick something. I didn't have any marks where my glasses lay though, so there wasn't any transfer or anything like that. It was holding up well. I just felt like it maybe could have used like a setting spray touch up to take down that powdery, heavy look. It still looked really nice. And then four hours later at the end of day check-in, it looked so much better. For some reason, my natural oils kind of came through. There was like a little bit of a natural glow and that's what took down that powderiness, which is why in the four hours, I think it would have benefited from just a setting spray, kind of pressing it in with my sponge. But at the eight hour mark, I was really impressed with this. I loved how it looked. 
you could still see a lot of the foundation and it wore away very naturally. That's what I want out of a foundation. Honestly, if a foundation is gonna like splotch up by the end of the day, I probably won't wear it because I just know it doesn't last well. It can be not long lasting as long as it wears down naturally and doesn't look splotchy. So I didn't have any of that. It looked really nice at the end of the day and there was a little bit of glow coming through, which I wish was kind of how it looked on application because it was just like that perfect amount of glow. Again though, when I applied this, I didn't use setting spray and using it again and again. I'll go over this more in my final thoughts. I think it does benefit from using a setting spray or something to just take down that slight, slight matte look that comes with this foundation. So that's kind of like the details and the wear test on the Synchro Skin Self Refreshing. Now let's go over the new Shiseido. This is the Revitalizing Essence Skin Glow Foundation. Let's go over the details and my wear test on this one. The information on the Revitalizing Essence Skin Glow, so this is a little bit more expensive at $56. It does come in a few more shades, 30 shades instead of the 27, and this is supposed to provide a medium coverage, same as the Synchro Skin. However, it does claim to provide a more hydrating finish, and it's supposed to have skincare infused ingredients, which I'm assuming is why it's priced a little bit higher. It claims that your skin will be more hydrated if you wear this for a week or more. Now, as far as packaging goes, it's a little bit different than the Synchro Skin. It does not have the locking mechanism. It's more of like your typical standard glass foundation bottle. I think it looks really nice. The consistency is a lot more liquidy and runny than the Synchro Skin. Skin. I think that that's probably to be expected since it does claim to be more of a radiant finish. That's just a little bit of information on the Revital Essence. Let's now go over my wear test for this foundation. I did already have an idea of the Synchro Skin because the Revital Essence I tried second. So just keep that in mind when going into this wear test. But again, no primer, only skincare. And this time I used a brush just because the consistency was so much more liquidy. And then I did go over it with a sponge. I typically always will use a sponge. I know not everyone is a sponge applicator. I just am, that's what I like. So that's how I applied it. And I really liked the coverage. I was very surprised. There was that slight glow going back to the Synchro Skin. It looked like the Synchro Skin at the end of the day with the glow that I was getting, it wasn't too much. Sometimes with Radiant Foundations, I get a little bit nervous because I don't like like a wet looking foundation. I don't wanna look like I just came out of the pool. I want some glow, but I don't want too much. And that's what this foundation gave. So if you like a semi-radiant finish, I wouldn't say this is overly radiant, which I really appreciated. However, I did not think that it had medium coverage. To me, this is a light medium. The Synchro Skin definitely has more coverage than the Revital Essence. It was more, to me, a light medium coverage, but I did really like the finish and I thought that it looked really nice on the skin. I was a little nervous how it was gonna look at the four hour check-in since the Synchro Skin was not as great. However, it looked better than the Synchro Skin and it wasn't too glowy. Sometimes with a radiant finish, your oils are gonna come through faster and you're just gonna look a little bit greasy. It did not look like that. Again, I used the same method. I did not use a setting spray. I only used powder under my eyes and T-zone where I had my concealer just to keep it the same across the board. So I was really impressed with the overall four hour check-in. I was really optimistic at this point on how it looked. And then four hours later, eight hours, end of day, you know, wore down pretty nice, but you can see just that it wore down more than the Synchro Skin. I think that comes across on camera. I just have more redness, more glowiness coming through. It doesn't look bad, but it's not 100% like 10 out of 10 of what I want a foundation to look like by the end of the day. It's acceptable for me, but not like the ultimate holy grail foundation. I just wish that it had a tad more coverage and covered a tad more redness. I can deal with the glow by the end of the day because I'm expecting oils to come through and all of that, but I wish there was a little bit more coverage. However, I'm not gonna dock any points because the 
wear down was so natural, just like the synchro skin. So wear down for both of these at the end of the day, I really put them neck and neck. And that was just my first impression thoughts on both of these foundations. Now that I've gone over the wear test for both of these and just kind of gave you my initial thoughts before I tested it multiple times, I'm now going to go into my final thoughts and tell you which one I think is better personally. First, I'm going to insert in some swatches though, just so you can see these two shades. Again, I have the shade 240, which is quartz in both of these. I'm going to compare them together as well as some other popular foundations in case you're trying to shade match yourself. And then after the swatches, we'll go over and I'll tell you which one I think is the winner. Hopefully those swatches were helpful. Now let's just go over my final thoughts. I always test a foundation at least minimum three times before coming back to talk about it. So I have tried these foundations multiple times. First, I guess let's just spoiler alert, talk about the one that I'm wearing. I am wearing the Synchro Skin. Here's the thing. I, I like both of these foundations. It was very neck and neck and I don't think that there's a black and white winner. However, I am just by a smidge, very, very small amount, and this just comes down to personal preference. Honestly, the winner for me is the Revital Essence. Now, this could change, but just based off of personal lifestyle, how, you know, I go day to day, which one I would reach for more on a daily basis, it's going to be this one. And that is because it just looks more natural. It's a little bit more lighter coverage, that's why I'm giving this one the winner. However, this one is also, I mean, this is a good foundation. That's why I'm wearing it today. I think this foundation looks better on camera, which is why I chose to wear it. And I think that this foundation is better if you need just a long wearing, reliable foundation. I think that this foundation also will fit more skin types, whether you have dry skin, normal skin, oily skin. I think that this will fit your skin type. You might have to tweak it a little bit. If you have dry skin, kind of go in with a hydrating primer, use setting spray, etc. I do think that this looks better with a setting spray just because it takes down a little bit of that matte finish and makes it more of a natural finish, which is what they claim. So overall, like I'm not upset that I have this and I will continue to use this. This is just something for me where that lifestyle comes in. I wouldn't wear this every day. I wouldn't reach for this every day. Now, if I was going to a job where I had to like physically be in a job, I used to work retail, then this would be the winner. However, I don't. I work from home, which is why this one just beat it out slightly because it just gives me more of that natural lightweight finish that I'm looking for on an everyday basis. However, the caveat to this, I don't think that this will fit every skin type. I think that if you have oily skin, and you'll have to let me know down below in the comments, I only have normal skin, so I'm only speculating this, but I think that if you have oily skin, it's gonna be a little bit too glowy unless you prefer a glowy foundation. This is like smack dab in the middle for being radiant, like it's not too radiant where I think only people with dry, dry skin are gonna love it. But it just, it, it is like a tad, it's not gonna wear long for you if you have oily skin. That's just my guess. I would love to hear your opinions down below in the comments. That's really just a quick kind of comparison against these foundations. I wanna keep it short and sweet, not just go on and on. I think I hit all the points on this. Let me know if you have either of these, if you plan on picking either of these up. I think, you know, going back, if I had to like hindsight's 2020, just I'm glad I have both of these. Even though that they're pretty pricey, I think that these will be staples in my collection for just all different types of events. If you're someone who doesn't like to have a lot of foundations, probably I would recommend to you this one because 
you could diversify it a little bit. You can make this lighter coverage if you cut it with a moisturizer. This one, you can't make heavier coverage. You can't make it more matte. So all around, like better foundation for me personally, this is the winner. It just is. I, there's something about this that surprised me a lot, especially since I tried this one first and I was like, this is the clear winner. There's no way that the other one is gonna top this because I was still waiting for it in the mail when I tried it. And this one just swooped in and there's just this like je ne sais quoi on your skin with this one. I'm going to stop rambling now. I just said I was going to and then I continued. So I'm going to officially end this video. Let me know your thoughts down below, your opinions on these foundations. If you tried them, if you plan on trying them, hopefully you're all having a great day and I will see you in the next video. Bye everyone.